Hello, Homestead. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please stay standing for a moment of silence. Keeping kids safe while riding on the bus. Hear how Sachs Transportation is dealing with COVID-19 two times per day. Plus, see how a local coffee shop popular among Homestead students adapts to the changes brought on by the coronavirus. Those stories and more straight ahead. Thank you for joining us. I'm Misha Lalleria. And I'm Corey Shaw. Currently, we are in our fourth week of the new school year. And while we're still learning new ways to navigate the school day in terms of physical distancing here inside the high school, the Sachs Transportation Department has to worry about keeping kids safe twice a day, in the morning, on the way to school, and once again while taking kids home after the day ends. HGS in Depth reporter Hadley Mertz got a chance to look into this process, and she joins us now with more. With COVID-19 interfering with the school year, Southwest Allen County schools are taking extra precautions to keep their students and drivers safe on the bus. Well, obviously it's a huge change for everybody this year. Um, we're asking for students to wear a mask. There's seating charts that are involved now uh, for you know contact tracing, which is so important. It used to be kids were getting on several different buses throughout the week, and now it's just one pickup location and one drop-off location. So those are the main things right now. With a change of procedures comes a change with behavior as well. A lot less people on the bus. Um, it is quieter. Kids seem to, to behave a lot better uh, with only having one person to a seat mainly. You have to sit in a signed seat and that thing that you do where you like move seats like as people get off the bus, you know, you're not allowed to do that. You have to stay in the same seat. Well, I'd say the best thing that we can say for everybody involved is just understand that everybody reacts to this situation differently. And you just got to be patient. I think the students are doing great. Uh, just hang in there. Hopefully this won't last very long. If you enjoy coming to school, if you enjoy hanging out with your friends, just like, you know, follow the rules and you can continue to have that. If you are planning on riding the bus this year or are already riding, be sure to follow these new procedures and stay safe. Reporting for HHS In Depth, I'm Hadley Mertz. Homestead Student Government wants you, but you can't run if you don't turn in your election packet. Please remember to turn in your application electronically to Mrs. Moss by the end of the day today. Attention student drivers. If you currently drive to school, you must pick up your parking permit in the discipline office by the end of the day today. You will need to provide a copy or take a picture of your current vehicle registration. Stop by the treasurer's office first if you still need to pay for your permit. The cost is $35 and they accept cash or a check payable to Homestead High School. Remember, you are not allowed to park at Homestead without a valid parking permit. Permits from last school year are no longer valid. Students, you can pick up your yearbooks today in the cafeteria commons. Be sure to pass on that graduates and online orders can be picked up in the office by door one. Attention baseball players. There will be a brief baseball meeting on Wednesday, September 9th in the cafeteria at 2.40 p.m. for anyone interested in trying out for the baseball team this spring. See Coach Bile in room 718 with any questions. COVID-19 has affected the daily routine of many small businesses nationwide, and that is no different here in Fort Wayne. One of Homestead students' favorite places to study is United Coffee, and reporter Nada DeHook recently got a chance to catch up with them to see how they are coping with the many changes the pandemic has brought to them. According to the Washington Post, over 100,000 local businesses have shut down due to COVID-19. One of Homestead students' favorite local food spots, United Coffee, is making the necessary changes they need to protect their customers from the pandemic. Before we used to serve things in a porcelain cups and it was uh, plates with nice presentation and silverware that people could sit down and relax and enjoy their coffee here in a cafe. With COVID, a lot of things changed and people started to take things to go or they enjoy it at home now or in their car or they have parties outside with their friends. So everything now is, in, you know, to go and paper products. We use a lot of that. Along with many other food spots, loyal customers have supported United Coffee through the pandemic. We didn't experience any decline during this period of time because people started to support local businesses, including obviously our coffee shop. We have a lot of loyal customers. We have a lot of people who wanted to support us. So when things go back to normal one day, what lesson do you think you're going to take away from this experience? The big lesson for any business is to be able to 
adapt and adjust on the fly. I think a lot of companies get settled down into a way or a process and things can change at any instant and COVID was a prime example of that. And so quick adaptation is very important. All over Fort Wayne, local businesses similar to United Coffee have been making the necessary changes to protect their customers from contracting the coronavirus, which is their way of encouraging you to support them during the current pandemic. Reporting for HHS In Depth, I'm Nada DeHook. Replacing a couple legendary teachers this school year was on the plate for the Physical Education Department. You'll meet the new faces roaming the gym and athletic fields this year when we come back. Here at Homestead High School Media, we're taking steps to stay safe during the COVID-19 pandemic. That includes limiting the number of workers in the TV studio and wearing masks when not on camera. We also socially distance our anchors each week at the news desk. In the studios, we limit the number of people allowed in at a time and even our mics wear masks. Thank you for doing your part in helping fight COVID-19. Welcome back. With the retirement of Mr. Miller and Mrs. Chernin at the end of the last school year, replacing over 80 years of experience in the PE department was on the docket for this year. Reporter Jacob Bashford introduces you to the new teachers taking those roles, one being brand new to the district and the other a familiar face to Homestead. Returning students at Homestead may have noticed some new faces in PE and health this year. I recently caught up with Mrs. Hoffman and Mr. Skelton to see how this year will go. Before I was a teacher at Homestead, I was an English teacher at a middle school in Huntington. I've coached a variety of sports over the years while I was there, from basketball, track, cross country. Um, I love being able to take kids outside and teach them in a different way, get them motivated. I'm a runner, I'm really into health and fitness, so it's kind of just, it was a natural for me to be here. Mrs. Hoffman and Mr. Skelton are ready to face the new challenges that come with this school year. It's been a challenge. You know, COVID has thrown a wrench into, I think, everyone's plans from teachers to students. But I think for the most part, you know, everyone is, is going day by day through the process. I know teachers and, and uh, the staff members here and the students are very resilient and uh, everyone's trying to find solutions as best they can. And so Obviously, there will be some drastic changes in procedural uh, process, but for the most part, I think uh, we're doing the best we can day by day. If you see Mrs. Hoffman or Mr. Skelton in the hallway this year, make sure to give them a warm welcome. Reporting for HHS In Depth, I'm Jacob Bashford. Taking a look at clubs meeting over the next week, the first K-pop club meeting is today after school in room 924. They will meet until 345, so make sure you have a ride home. Returning members and new members are always welcome. The Acoustic Music Club will also have its call-out meeting today in room 117. The meeting will last from 2.45 p.m. until 3 o'clock p.m. After school today, Homestead's Young Progressive Club is having its first meeting. Get on down to Mrs. Smith's room, room 614, for political discussion, free snacks, and to learn more about current events. Everyone is welcome regardless of political affiliation. With the pandemic shutting off all of the drinking fountains in the building, Homestead's vending machines serve a bigger purpose than ever before. Reporter Roland McMillan takes a look at this year's process of making sure plenty of drinks are available to the student body each and every school day. It is no secret that COVID-19 and the coronavirus has affected almost everything here at Homestead. But even things like vending machines tend to fall victim to the virus. However, it's not in the same way that students would actually assume. The supply chain isn't what it used to be. So that's not a, a total excuse for why we want to go to water. We want to move more towards water so that you guys have access to it. You don't have access to the drinking fountains any longer. So I wanted to make sure we had water in various places throughout the school so that you can get water if you absolutely need it. If anything, vending machines might be the best alternative to water fountains. But with any improvement, it does come at a cost because we have kids down here all the time that are losing money. It's inconvenient and we, whenever we get the, whenever somebody loses money in it, say you lost a dollar in the machine, you would come down, we would write down your name, the date that it happened, and give you your dollar back. The support with vendor companies such as Coke and Homestead has helped keep machines loaded and ready for business for a very long time, and they'll keep continuing to do so as long as school is still in session. And Coke has really worked well with us. Um, when we call them, they do their best to get out and take a, you know, you said maintain the machines. If there's an issue with one of the machines, 
we can, I could call them today and they'll probably have somebody out in the next couple days to fix the issue. So they've been a good partner for us and we hope that it continues. If you are desperate for water or any other beverage and have some spare change in your pocket, then give our vending machines a chance. Reporting for HHS In-Depth, I'm Roland McMillan. Turning to weather now, it's been more bearable this past week in terms of outdoor temperatures. But are things going to cool off even more over the next week? William Baquette joins us now with a check of the forecast. Thanks guys. As we move into September, we've really started to see temperatures cool off over the weekend. For today's game, it's looking to get a bit chilly with a high of 75, then overnight, we see things really cool down to a low of 51. Over the weekend, temperatures remain in the upper 70s and will stay fairly dry. I'll be back later to take a look at the seven day forecast. All right, thank you, William. Next in sports, Homestead bounced back from a loss in week one, defeating Concordia last Friday. Ashton and Caleb will have a recap. Plus, find out how other athletic teams did this past week. We'll be right back. Tonight at 7, Homestead versus Bishop Lures. Listen live on the Point 91 FM. Welcome back. After a loss in week one against the Northrop Bruins, Homestead looked to week two ready to bounce back. The Spartans traveled out to Zollner Stadium to take on the cadets. With a full recap of that game and standings from the SAC, here's Caleb Wood. Out to the renovated Zollner Stadium where the Spartans faced off with the Concordia cadets for the second game of the season, bringing in a win on the road. Despite the low score, there's still plenty to talk about. If you're a defensive type of guy, then this was definitely the game to watch. Plenty of sacks, plenty of fumble recoveries. Having said this, the offense upped their passing game from last week. This seemed to work in their favor. In the second quarter, Ormsby finding Kistler in the end zone. He hangs on to the ball. The PAT is good, putting seven on the board, which would be the only points scored by either team for the night. Not the best shot here, but Braden Hardwick knocks down a defender. Just one of many runs by Hardwick that night. Homestead defense still strong, keeping Concordia scoreless. Your final score, just 7-0, but a win is a win. Homestead moves to 1-1 one one in the conference. Carroll, Bishop, Dwenger, and Northrop all remain at the top, undefeated after Week 2. Dwenger winning an intense game over Northside, and Snyder now losing both of its first two games by 30 points each. The Spartans are on the road again tonight, this time it's Bishop Lures. It was a shutout win for the Spartans last year at home. You can listen on the Point 91 FM or get live updates on Twitter. Taking a look at recent Homestead athletic action over the past week, the Homestead girls golf team was in action against the Bishop Dwinger Saints on Monday. Simone Sink shot two under par as Homestead took the win 190 to 155. The Homestead girls soccer team pummeled Marion on Tuesday night 8-0. The Lady Spartans were led by senior Emma Doobie with three goals. They now sit at 3-1 on the season as they gear up to face the Concordia Cadets next Thursday. The Homestead volleyball team took down the Snyder Panthers on Tuesday 3-0. Senior Anna Mosser led the team with 41 kills. Leah Mummer had 9 blocks. Samantha Flores had 12 aces. And Michaela Kelly had 68 digs. The team will be in action against Belmont on Tuesday. Both cross-country teams placed second at the Penn Invitational over the weekend. The girls team was led by freshman Addison Noblock, who placed first, and Elise Peckinpah, who placed seventh. On the boys' side, junior Ethan Bates led the Spartans with a second place finish. Senior Donnie McArdle shortly behind him in third. Both teams are in action at the Marion Invitational tomorrow morning. And the boys' tennis team took third at the North Central Invite over the weekend. The team was led by doubles duo Landon Sather and Tim Steiner. The team will be in action at Carroll tomorrow morning. That's all for sports. William has a final check of the forecast after the break. On a future HHS in depth, meet Homestead's new police dog, Loki. Andre Santliver sits down with Officer Robertson to learn how this canine keeps Homestead safe. Only on HHS in depth. For the game at Bishop Lewis tonight, it'll be some pleasant weather to play football. Temperatures sit in the high 70s and mostly cloudy skies all week long, with our only significant chance of rain coming on Tuesday night with a slight chance of thunderstorms rolling in. 
The hot days of August seem to be in the past as more fall-like temperatures are here for the entire week, including overnight lows down in the 50s pretty much all week long. All right, William, thank you. And thank you for watching today. Don't forget that the Homestead Spartans are in action tonight on the road against Bishop Lewer's Knights. There is no video broadcast this week, but you can still tune in to the action on the Point 91 FM. The OPS pregame show with Matt Selfrank and Chris Corman takes the air at 6.15 p.m. and kickoff is set for 7 p.m. You can also get quarterly score updates by checking the Locker Report's Twitter page, and Ashton and Caleb will be in to recap the action next week in sports. Have a great weekend.